Hi, my name is Howard Barnaby, and I'm a glaucoma specialist in the Seattle area, and I'd like to talk about the NIDAC YC200S Plus laser today. And I'm going to start out with a question, why do we need another laser? You know, SLT has been around for a while, and the reasons for another laser would be they're very comparable to other lasers on the market, or a new laser would offer some enhancements. And those enhancements could be enhanced engineering, they could be enhanced features, and when I think about features, I'm thinking about precision, and I'm thinking about control. And also, I want to look at the functionality. So is this laser something that does one thing? As a glaucoma specialist, I certainly like SLT, but I also like a laser to be able to do uh, capsulotomies, I'd like it to do iridotomies. So when we look at any of the lasers and we talk about engineering, these are the things that we take for granted. We usually don't think about what's under the hood, but it's important. So there's a laser component, uh, there's a control of that laser, the control panel, there's the optics and there, and there's the delivery system. So when we think about the laser component, we're making the assumption and we want to believe, and we'd like to have proven to us that every time we put our foot down uh, or we hit the clicker to actuate the laser, that we're actually getting that precise laser energy that we uh, have set up for. So if I'm setting up for 0.7 millijoules, I want to get 0.7 millijoules every single time. I also want to make sure across that laser beam that the energy is evenly and homogeneously distributed. I don't want there to be peaks and valleys. Then I also want to have a, a system which is stable that if I'm going to turn that laser on, it's going to work, you know, each and every time. So the next step is if I'm using a laser, I want to be able to have easy fingertip control of that laser. I'd like it to be as precise as I could, and I'd like it to be able to be uh, functional. So if I'm treating a patient, a right eye, I'd like to be able to have that uh, control panel shift it to my right. Or if I'm treating a left eye of a patient, I want to be able to shift it to the left. I'd like to have that mobility. And then I also want to have some features. I want to make sure it's safe. So if that laser is not lined up or if my lens isn't lined up or if my illumination tower is in the way, I want the laser to stop me, remind me, and give me a chance to realign. I also like a new feature. And that new feature is navigational guidance or what NIDEC is calling the NAVI system, which helps me evenly distribute the laser around the 360 degree uh, perimetry that I'm uh, applying the laser. And then also, I'd like to be able to have better uh, control of the energy settings. So in this particular laser, uh, I have excellent uh, control of that, those, those settings. Optics are important to all of us because we want to be able to have excellent visualization when we treat. And the visualization, in my experience, with the optics on this laser are comparable to my slit lamps. You know, they're simply excellent. I also have a illumination tower, um, which is adjustable. It can go up and down based on what I need. And then finally, I have a laser that's been uh, ergonomically redesigned so it's comfortable for me and it has a shorter operating distance. And that simply ma makes it a lot easier for, for you or for me to do the treatments. I would like to share with you my initial experience uh, treating glaucoma patients using the SLT feature on this laser. Uh, I was the one who did all the procedures. Um, I'm very experienced doing laser trabeculoplasty, but to be candid, this was my first experience with the SLT. So I'm sharing with you my initial 54 patients. We had a standard protocol where we treated 360 degrees of the trabecular meshwork. We used the navigational guidance system, the NAVI system, and we applied between 80 to 100 applications for each patient. And I'd like to share with you um, the the data we have for three and six months. So this is a scatter plot. I'll, I'll put a line in there um, that would show uh, equivalence and everything below that line would represent an improvement in eye pressure. 
So the lower line represents the pre-treatment pre pressure and the line going up, uh, the post uh, pressure at six months. So everything below that shows an improvement. Everything above that line uh, would be a deterioration and, and any point along the line would show uh, comparable efficacy. And presented differently, this is with the histogram. You could see on your left, there's the three month data and on the right, there is the six month data that there really isn't any uh, regression or loss of effect uh, with the patients that we treated. And if you look closely at the graphs, uh, everything to the right of the zero represents a reduction of pressure and every uh, box or patient to the left of the zero would represent a deterioration. And presented differently, overall, uh, at six months, uh, the mean decrease in pressure was a little over 15%. And looking plus or minus two standard deviations, we had 12 patients who fell in that group, but we also had a significant number of patients who had a better response. So 18 patients, the pressure dropped between 21 to 40%. And we also had a handful of patients uh, where the pressure dropped even greater than 40%. So we had uh, very good efficacy, and the results are certainly consistent and comparable to other published studies. So we have an ergonomically and well-designed laser that makes it comfortable for me. I have something where my control panels are in intuitive, and I have good safety controls. So when I go back to answer the question, why do we need another laser? I want that laser to have advantages. And my experience with this laser is the advantages offer me precision and they offer me predictability.